Hey, it's 2023. What's up, Isical Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite songs. And today, I finally have the chance to uh, finally get to the good lists, the lists that everyone's waiting for. And of course, today, I'm going to be doing the top 20 worst songs of 2022. Making this list is particularly hard because there are just so many awful, terrible songs released this year. Some of them I don't even know about until I watched the worst songs list of other YouTubers. So yeah, this list has a bit of uh, every YouTuber ever, uh, other music critics worst songs. But then some of them are also songs that I found out about myself. Uh, that that I have extremely detested. So, uh, <coughs> anyways, let's get to the dishonorable mentions. First of all, I would have to uh, mention Drake's "Calling My Name," where, uh, <laughs> you know, Drake's really the type of guy who would write a song about how uh, he would hear a pussy calling his name. And then we have Boy With Luke's IDGAF featuring Black Bear. And of course, uh, IDGAF stands for um, I Don't Give a Fuck. Oh my god. Wow, that's crazy. Then, uh, <laughs> of course, me after mentioning that, I have to mention Gale's ABCDEFU. Oh my god. It's like a children's song, but then it ends with FU. That's... That's crazy! That's so mean! Wow! That's like swear words! I can't believe it! And then we have uh, Calvin Harris, Dua Lipa, and Young Thug's Potion coming out with one of the blandest and most repetitive summer jams of the year. And then after that, Eminem and Snoop Dogg's From the D to the LBC, whatever that means where unfortunately two hip-hop legends have to come out with a silly goofy little rap song about nfts and then afterwards we have walker hayes with y'all life because of course not enough damage is done to, to the music industry after walker hayes silly little apple b song and then we have charlie puth's left and right featuring jungkook again this this song almost ended up onto the list almost but uh, yeah, bland wallpaper song. Jungkook sounds like he's only there for a paycheck. And then finally, at the end of the mentions, we have Chris Brown's Iffy. I don't know what's worst, the song, or is it the fact that he's still making music? All right, <clears throat> here are the top 20 worst songs of the year. Starting off at number 20, we have Simple Plans, Anxiety, because... <laughs> Nothing's, uh, <laughs> nothing's more appropriate than making a legitimate mental health disorder that a lot of people are suffering from and turning it into a cartoonish little Disney song. Uh, get away from me, ooh, get away from me, cause I have anxiety. <laughs> Oh, why? Why? At number 19, we have Jack Harlow's First Class. I, I like the guy. I respect the guy. But damn, you didn't, you really didn't have to rap about the flavor of your semen. And it's not even like a, like a line in a verse or something. It's the chorus. It's the hook. So it gets repeated. And, and, and he even raps that part out with such charisma. It's just, God damn and the song itself is also really bland and boring at number 18 we have uh the return of megan trainer with the track made you look uh another really annoying redundant uh all over the place kind of a uh, random uh super glossy overproduced type of pop song that you would expect from her at 17, we have Jax and Jake's You Love You. I didn't even know about the song until um, Brad Taste and Music mentioned it in his video because I don't use TikTok, so I, I, don't, I don't know any of these TikTok songs or anything like that. If I had known, I probably 
would have lost about 30 years of my life. But uh, really, this is one of those TikTok songs where, of course, they have to reinterpolate uh, some child, some children's song. And that doesn't, this isn't the only instance on this list where somebody does that. You know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, essentially, Jax and Jake reinterpolates the Barney theme song, I love you, you love me, but turning it into you love you, I love me, we all hate each other secretly or some shit like that. And it's just so silly. Like imagine listening to this and you're older than 10 years old. Like, come on. <laughs> and then at number 16, uh, of course, speaking of reinterpolating songs, we have David Guetta and Bebe Reha's I'm Good, which interpolates I'm Blue. You know, I'm Blue, da boo dee da boo da da na 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 na. But now it's turned from a classic danceable internet meme song uh, into a party feel good song, I'm Good, like I'm feeling good. Like, it's party time. Like, like what are you going to do? Enjoy your life or something, you fucking loser. Uh, anyways, at number 15, we have a new song from Skillet, White Horse, which is uh, Skillet coming up with a metal track that also sounds so quiet and minimalist and compressed and awfully produced. It simultaneously sounds like a... I don't even know what it is. It's... Like a pop song but doesn't it isn't poppy at all um, maybe it sounds more like an, an electronic song than a metal song it's just so extremely compressed and the vocals are just so hideous it it's actually astonishing I'm actually impressed how how much they've compressed the song at number 14 we have little Dirk's Broadway girls on my birthday featuring morgan waller weller where uh essentially we have an unlikely marriage between country and trap rap and of course when you mix country and trap rap together you get shit like this where it sounds like a like a hideous mix of awfulness and of course they're singing about Broadway girls, you know, like female performers from the Broadway theater productions, yes. <laughs> and then at number 13, we have the new song from Machine Gun Kelly, A, featuring Lil Wayne. Why does this song even exist? This is such a non-song. Like, throughout the song, it's, it's basically pop punk, but uh, of course, it's not complete without having some trap rap in it and it's just I, I don't know man pop punk pop punk revivalism is a mistake in 2022 what the hell is this thing what the hell is this song throughout the whole song machine gun kelly is like he tries to sound rebellious he tries to rap about things that are rebellious but he ends up sounding like what being rebellious feels like to a nine-year-old child or something. A, A, I just wipe my nose because it's dirty. A, I cut my hair and it's messy. A, like that's, that's the level of songwriting we're talking about. And Lil Wayne's absolutely crap in this song. I don't know what, what he's doing here. At number 12, we, of course, the list is not complete without mentioning uh, the one and only legendary AJR, the DJ is crying for help. I mean, look look at this single cover. Uh, I, I don't... I, I always refer to this song as the Feet song because this is like the Feet song. Feet! Yeah, uh, AJR comes back with another helping of um, uh, Disneyland type beat song <laughs> where their music just sounds like a soundtrack to a Disney movie. This is what they think of millennials or actually Gen Zers think like. Like everything's just so simple and everything's just like cartoony and goofy. They're just so out of touch with with modern culture and, and how people act, how teenagers act in twenty in the twenty twenties. They're just so 
they're just so out of touch and this song is just awful like the violins the raspy breathy vocals on top of the violins i i really don't know what's going on here of course after mentioning ajr i have to mention ajr's best friend the chain smokers at number 11 so close almost ended up in my top 10 but um yeah obviously whenever chain smokers come out with a new song they have to somehow end up on my list because the chain smokers are my mortal enemy and i know they're based in la of course i mean if, if you listen to their music they're you know you know haha party electronic music you can already taste the los angelesness of chain smokers and uh, you know i'm going back to la in about a month so if i run into drew taggart on the streets oh boy i'm gonna have a full-on psychotic break because this this shit is unacceptable all right here's the top 10 uh, <laughs> uh, at number 10 we have sin with house with a view so this is i guess it's a tiktok song or something i don't even know but essentially we have a little uh white girl uh 17 18 year old white girl basically bragging Ooh, i got a house with a view i got a private swimming pool i got 19 bedrooms in my mansion for no reason and something like that it is an incredibly cheeky frustrating annoying little silly little dry rap tune and what's even worse is the lyrics of the song because it just reinforces the idea of of ooh, i i have such a nice mansion i have so many nice cars and i'm rich and that's the whole song flexing but it's not even flexing with charisma or with attitude or something when you know i've experienced the horrors of la and i've seen so many homeless people in la and then when i hear a song like this especially an american song like this where it's just like oh i have a nice house and everything it's just like shut the fuck up okay at number nine, we have, uh, oh, damn, it, it hurts to say this because Lizzo is really, um, is, is, she's talented, okay? But what is this song? Girls. So uh, Lizzo uh, decided to interpolate Backstreet Boys Girls and make it into one of the most um, annoying, screechy, uh, dumb songs of the year uh, with some of the cringiest vocal performances provided by her. I really don't know why. This song is like repellent, okay? I'm repelled against the song. This song is just awful. All right, at number eight, we have Kid Rock's Never Enough. Uh, obviously, there have been tons of uh, great contenders on this list provided by Kid Rock because Kid Rock has been rocking, rocking quite hard like a kid this year. Kid Rock, yeah! Um, but, um, really, the, this, um, the winner, um, the worst song that he came out this year is really Never Enough. This is the closest we've gotten to a Corey Feldman song that Corey Feldman did not make. Because Kid Rock, while maintaining his usual awesome, badass, country rock style, uh, he also has to, I guess, turn it into auto-tune pop? It's, what the fuck? <laughs> what was he thinking while making this song? I don't know. It sounds like he's having a stroke while singing this song. But on top of that, of course, we have the casually mindless lyrics about the political state of the USA without knowing much, without having any great talking points or anything like that. So all in all, a really embarrassing effort. At number seven, we have Royal and the Serpents, Fuck Boy Reject. Again, like songs like this just make me think pop punk revivalism in 2022 is an awful idea because this is this is like crackhead anthem. The production is so dusty and noisy; it sounds like rubbing sandpaper against my eardrums. And then, of course, we have the lyrics where uh, the frontman of the of the group, the duo, the the, the uh, performer, uh, she basically sings about the type of guy she's into is you know fuckboy rejects like society rejects 
the stuff like that and and I feel like this is the kind of song that uh, 15 16 year old alt fans bop their heads to and just act like ooh I'm we're so zany we're so quirky oh wow we're so random Ugh. at number six we have uh, the new muse song will of the people <laughs> The will of the people, the will of the people, the will of the will of the will of the people. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Muse comes back with another heaping helping of anarchist take down the government. The society is broken and the only way to, to fix it is to revolt type song. And it's not that I don't agree with the sentiment at all. I think anarchism is uh you know it's not without its reasons okay but uh muse <sighs> like i just listen to this song i just think it's it's just it's just too it's just enjoying itself too much, you know, with the ultra dramatic guitars, the arena size chants, the super jumpy drums. You know, Muse made the song thinking that every single person listening to the song will be singing along to it, rocking out to it, like, yeah, will the people. And it just completely lacks self-awareness to the point where it's just really cringy. Uh, it's also important to note that Muse uh, basically stole the hooks and the refrains from Marilyn Manson's Beautiful People, which is kind of silly. And um, yeah, it's just um, kind of cringe, unfortunately. Speaking of cringe, here's the top five. At number five, I'm giving it to Black Eyed Peas with double d's i don't know what's going on with black eyed peas i guess they just can't really give up making music after their peak in the early 2010s and the late 2000s they just refuse to give up and fade away from the spotlight and they keep on churning out these really really awful um <coughs> sort of uh hip house tracks and the most annoying the most degrading and the most ear piercing has to be the track double d's because i swear to god 50 percent of this track is just double double d's double double d's double double d's double double d's and and that's it with a very dry annoying beat that sounds like it's mastered by a teenager and uh, sound clips and production that's so bad and repetitive it's it's just it gives you a migraine essentially all right here's a funny number four and number four i'm giving it to razzle khan's crocodile of wall street this is a, not a very well-known person because she is not a rapper she is not she's a, an entrepreneur but of course when you're rich enough when you're goofy enough uh, you end up making rap music so uh, we have a Razzle Khan, who is, I guess, a cryptocurrency shark, a crypto scammer, a crypto woman, whatever that means. Um, she she has so much crypto, and she got so rich at some point that she decided to make a rap song about how rich she is off of crypto, flexing, sort of, you know, being all, yo, I got money because of cryptocurrency, yeah. With some of the cringiest bars you ever hear in 2022. One of the goofiest music videos you can find this year. And what's really funny is that she's in jail right now. <laughs> so, uh, whoops, not so rich anymore. Alright, at number three we have the new Tom McDonald track New World Order featuring Adam Calhoun. Um, yeah, so, uh, Racism, the song, literally, I, I don't, e I don't even know why is Tom McDonald doing this, like, sh he's Canadian, what are you even doing, is this, is this all an act, like, wh what are you even doing, what do you even gain from this, why, why, but yeah, Tom McDonald coming up with one terrible take after another on this really, really mid-rap song with 
very self uh, unaware and very pretentious, very try hard rapping and very mediocre production. Again, one terrible take after another about gun control and racism and just being a contrarian against literally everyone ever because it's so cool. So uh, yeah, very, very awful song. All right, number two, worst song. You know, number two and number one can really tie because both of these songs also make me want to kill myself. But um, <coughs> I'll, I'm going to give her number two because um, she's not a professional singer. So I don't really, really want to put her on a, on a tough spot. But it's Amaranth Down Bad because like I said, if, uh, if you're rich enough and if you're goofy enough, Eventually, you will want to make a song. Uh, Dream did it last year. Uh, and this year, of course, there's Razzle Khan. And of course, at some point, Amaranth is going to do it. Now, Amaranth, I respect her. I respect her for what she does. Uh, I, I don't, like, uh, condemn her or anything. But Jesus Christ, this song's awful. <laughs> Woo! Um, I mean... It, it, it needs no explanation. I mean, the thick auto-tune, the awful performances, the very bad melodies. I mean, it's got every character of a worse song you could think of. So it really needs no explanation. You know, the song is really just about, ooh, you're down bad. You know, you're buying my OnlyFans, blah, 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 blah. I mean, imagine buying her OnlyFans. Uh, because you're horny and you're and you're looking for some good picks, you know, and then you just get hit with this rancid, goofy ah song, and it just completely ruins your mood. Like, what's even the point of making a song like this? I reckon if you want to boost your, I guess, only fan sales outside of that um, area, I guess you know there there are plenty of other things you can do. You know, other than making a shitty ass song like this so yeah that leaves us to the number one spot and you and i both know what it is leah kate's twinkie twinkie little bitch twinkie twinkie little bitch just another narcissist so yeah um this is everything wrong about music in 2022 all accumulated into one fucking song uh, crappy, cringy as TikTok teenage music, reinterpolating old songs, especially children's songs, pop punk revivalism turned cringe, and uh, like what the hell is the music video? Like I, I feel like Leia Kate spent thirty percent of the time in the music video crawling front and back in a tunnel or something, but yeah, Leia Kate essentially re interpolated uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Stars, a perfectly fine children's song, and turn it into a uh, angry ex-girlfriend angry song. Yeah. <laughs> and it's edgy because it's a child song, but I'm swearing I said the word bitch in the chorus. It's so crazy. Wow. And uh, <laughs> like infantilizing things like like especially in the music video with the with baby cradle and the baby bedroom and the baby with a big man's head Ugh, stomach churning and the dance moves like who the hell choreographed that song anyways and it's also important to note that leia kate is 30 fucking years old she's 30 years old why are you doing this to yourself give yourself a break Treat yourself to a good cup of coffee, to a good book, and enjoy some views. And don't make the song. Don't sing the song. Don't. Just don't. So yeah, uh, what are your least favorite songs of 2022? Uh, comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.